Hi guys, this video is about a special type of memory management where you have the possibility to allocate many objects and then release all of them at once. This is perfectly suited for our needs in the compiler project and in this video I will show you the basic ideas behind this type of memory management and of course how to implement it. What I basically will describe in this video is how the memory management in the LCC compiler is implemented. The LCC compiler was implemented by Hansen and Fraser and also documented in their great book about it. What they have is in the LCC compiler three memory regions, they call it arenas, and from each memory region you can allocate as much memory as you need and then you have the possibility to release all memory that is associated to one of these regions all at once. We will keep it a bit simpler, but the implementation basically will be the same. We will just have one memory region. Our interface will provide one function for allocating memory, and because we just have one memory region, it can be used like malloc. You simply specify with a parameter how many bytes you want to allocate, and you get back a pointer to this allocated block of memory. You will see that the implementation internally checks whether you run out of memory, and uh, in that case you get an error message and it will call finalize and uh, call exit with uh, exit code 1. So you don't have to uh, care about that when you use this function. You also don't have to care about what pointers you want to release because there will be just one function that releases all previously allocated uh, blocks of memory and that means this function doesn't require any parameter. In our first test program we therefore can Write uh, something like that, where we first allocate different blocks of memory and then release all at once. And then we can check with Valgrind whether we actually do have a memory leak or not. And of course, we should not have. Now, this will solve our problem also with the calculator. Uh, in the parser, we generate different expression nodes, and we will use uh, from now on this allocation function from this uh, module. And after we evaluated all these expressions, or have a syntax error, we release all memory at once. And with that, we also should fix the memory leaks in the calculator. Now let's first write this test program already and uh, the header file for this module. Okay, let's begin with the test program. I have to include finalize and the header file for this memory regions. And then in the test program, I will allocate and release memory blocks. Let me store this line in a MIM register. And then I allocate a few memory blocks. Then I actually also want to print out some information about the internal data structures. Now this will be another function that I will declare in the header file for the memory regions. And then I also want to release memory, of course. And um, then again, allocate maybe some memory and then release it again. And after releasing memory, I also want to print out again this uh, information about the data structures. So also after allocating a block again, and then also in the end, I want to see how the data structures look like. And then I want to already write the header file. So the usual pattern, uh, we need the include guard. So this becomes a define and the zero end if. And then we have to declare these three functions. So first this alloc function. And then the header for this uh, standard definitions needs to be included. Then also this release function needs to be declared. 
and this um, function for printing this um, report of the internal data structures. Okay, and then we already can check whether uh, we can create an object file from this test program. Okay, so no typos. And then I copy this uh, three declarations and um, begin with the implementation, of course, um, initially just with skeleton functions. So here also the typical procedure, first including the header file and then turning these declarations into skeletons for function definitions. And then we actually can create a executable with some warnings because um, this function for allocating memory is not returning anything and the parameter is not used. Okay, our implementation will manage linked lists with large memory blocks and from this large memory blocks memory can be allocated. Now, before we deal with uh, how these linked lists will be managed uh, for implementing the allocate and release function, let's first focus on the data structure of a single large memory block. And from that, it also will become clear what it actually means to allocate memory from such a memory block. The data structure simply consists of a bookkeeping part, a block header, and this block header is followed by some block of memory from which actually memory can be allocated. Now in this bookkeeping part, in this block header, we have three pointers. One next pointer, because these memory blocks will be always in a linked list, but also two other pointers for keeping track of how many bytes are available for allocating memory from this memory block and where is the first free byte in this memory block. The size of this complete memory block will initially simply be the size of this struct block, this block header, and the capacity of this block that immediately follows. You will see that later this needs to be fixed a bit because we also have to consider alignment requirements on platforms. But initially we'll uh, simply ignore this to keep the first uh, implementation simple. When we initialize such a memory block, we always have to make sure that this end pointer points to the end of the memory. Then, uh, if the block is completely available for allocating memory from it, if it provides full capacity, this free pointer will point to the first byte after the block header. And that means from these two pointers, we uh, know how many bytes are available from this block and where the first available byte is located. Now, if you want to allocate memory from this memory block, it simply means if you want to allocate n bytes, you check whether the free pointer plus n exceeds the end pointer or not. If it's not exceeding the end pointer, you actually can allocate from this memory block this number of bytes. That means what you get back is the original value of the free pointer and afterwards this free pointer will be incremented by n. Then maybe you can allocate another time memory from this memory block. Then of course the same thing happens and so on. But of course sooner or later the memory block will be exhausted then you have to allocate another large memory block and then we have to think about how to organize these memory blocks in a linked list, of course. Before we think about this organization, however, let's already do a bit of implementation. What I would like to have is one function which is allocating a memory block and also initializes this end member, this uh, pointer to the end of the memory block. And I want to simply have uh, later of one function which is doing or the error handling, because here we are calling malloc, so this could go wrong. So we should, in this case, of course, print an error message and call finalize, and then exit the program. So let's do this first, and then we uh, think about the data structures for allocating and releasing memory. So let's begin with the declaration of this struct block with the next pointer to the next memory block and this two pointers, free and end uh, character pointers, pointers to single bytes. 
then this function for allocating a memory block will be declared as a static function because it's only used internally and I also do not use here this suffix mem region. So declaring it as static also avoids name conflicts. Then here we have to allocate memory and this can fail. So that means we have to call finalize exit and for that we have to include the header for finalize and also the headers for standard IO. For printing error messages we need this function fprintf and for malloc I need the header from the standard library. Then here I will not use my usual pattern for allocating some block uh, with malloc where I usually would use the size of the dereference pointer. You will see that uh, this later will be more convenient to do it this way, to actually compute the sizes, the sum of the size of this block header and the capacity. But then we go back to the usual pattern, we check whether this is the null pointer. In that case, we print an error message and call finalize exit. Okay, and then we have to set this end pointer to the end of this memory block. For that I first have to convert this pointer into a character pointer so that this pointer arithmetic is done byte-wise and not in uh, sizes of the block header. And then I simply return this uh, pointer b. And now let's see whether this compiles, of course, with warnings, at least if there are no typos. But it seems to be okay. Uh, these warnings uh, are what we expected. In the implementation we need one linked list for all the memory blocks that are still used for allocated data. And if a new memory block needs to be created then it will afterwards append it to this list. Now if you want to append a node to a list then it's inconvenient to deal with the case that this list can be empty it's more convenient to have always at least one list node in this list. And for that we will have one dummy list head. This will be a global variable head of type struct block. Because it's a global variable, it will be zero initialized when the program starts up. So that means this head node is a memory block with a capacity of zero bytes. And then we will need a pointer, which is always pointing to the last node in this list, to the tail node. And this will be this pointer tail, which will be initialized with the address of the head. Then the first implementation of this allocate function is as follows. We first check whether we can allocate memory from this tail of the list. If this is not the case, then we have to create a new memory block with a sufficient large capacity. At least the number of bytes that are required, of course, but it should be sufficiently larger. And that means afterwards we always can allocate from the tail some memory. This also means that in a first call of allocate, we will have to create a new memory block, but then we can allocate from here some bytes, and hopefully we can do this uh, several times, that we can reuse the memory block that was created here. But then, of course, sooner or later we will exhaust this memory block, and then we have to create a new memory block, which will become the new tail of this uh, list, and then we have to allocate memory from here. That also means that we eventually will waste memory, because we will never go back. Once we have created a new tail, we only allocate the memory from here or create a new tail. But that's the price for efficiency. Now, let's first implement this simple first version of allocate, and then we can think about how to release memory blocks. Okay, um, first of all, I want to have an enum constant for this additional bytes that we will always allocate when a new memory block, block will be allocated. This new memory block should have a capacity which is at least the number of bytes requested, but uh, then it actually should be sufficiently larger. And 
if this extra capacity I can specify how much larger. And then we, of course, need this list with this memory blocks. And of course, uh, these global variables are static global variables because we just use them within this source file. Okay, and then in the implementation of this um, alloc from memory region function, I first check whether memory can be allocated from the current tail node. And if this is not the case, then we have to allocate a new memory block. And afterwards, we for sure can allocate memory from this um, tail node. Afterwards, this free pointer has to point to the next available byte, but what we return is the original value of free. And now we have to allocate a new memory block and append it to this list. And then this size is the number of bytes plus this extra capacity. And actually, of course, this value of extra capacity should be sufficiently larger than just 64. But I wanna um, keep it small here for educational purposes. Okay, so now this new memory block uh, was appended to this list. And then we also have to set the free pointer to the first available byte in this memory block. So we have to set it to the byte after the uh, block header. Okay, and with that, this test program already should compile and actually also work. But of course, you will not see anything. So the next thing that we should do is um, implement this report function, this print info function. And here I simply want to print for every memory block its address, its capacity, and how many bytes are available in this memory block. So I have to iterate over this list with the usual pattern. I actually don't want to print out the uh, information for the uh, head node. That would be boring. I, I will begin with the first memory block after the head node. And then I first compute the capacity of this memory block. So the capacity is the end pointer minus the address of this memory block minus the size of the block header. And the number of available bytes is simply the end pointer minus the free pointer. And then I'm gonna print out this information actually with some indent maybe then it's better to read. I first want to print the address of this memory block and its capacity and then its number of available bytes. And maybe after that also a new line. Then it's also easier to read these reports. And you will see that actually reading these reports and understanding what you actually see will require some time. And um, maybe you also want to draw some pictures uh, to these reports. Now let me just show you how to uh, understand this report. This uh, report here comes from this uh, call of print info. And you see that this first two calls of alloc, this 84 bytes could be um, allocated from this first memory block. But then this third alloc required uh, another memory block. And that's why we have now two memory blocks afterwards. In the first memory block, actually still 22 bytes could be available. But those were not sufficient for allocating 42 bytes. That's why we had to allocate another memory block. The capacity of this second memory block was 
42 plus this extra capacity plus 64. So that's why in the second memory block, still 64 bytes are available. When we release the memory region, we will not release these memory blocks. This would be a waste. We simply prepend this linked list of used memory blocks to a list of released memory blocks. And then we detach this list from the head node. Prepending a linked list to a other linked list is a simple operation and cheap. It can be done with just a few statements. And initially, of course, this linked list with the released memory blocks should be empty. So we will simply use a global pointer for that. So that makes sure that initially this is a null pointer. Then prepending this linked list happens first by making sure that the next pointer of the current tail node points to the first memory block of this list of um, release memory blocks. In this case, this is kind of boring because this list is empty. So we overwrite here a null pointer with a null pointer, but I will show you a more exciting example afterwards. Then we let the released pointer point to the first memory block after the head node and then we detach this memory block from the head node. That means we simply will set the next pointer in the head to the null pointer. And then we set back the tail pointer to the head node and that's it. So with that we now have a pool eventually of available memory blocks that could be reused for allocating new memory and of course now we have to change our implementation of the allocate function. As before, we will first check whether memory can be allocated from the current tail node. If this is not the case, like in this example, then we will check whether this linked list of released memory blocks has one block available. If this is the case, like here, then we take off this first memory block from there, detach it from this uh, linked list and append it to our linked list of used memory blocks. Then we restore, of course, this memory block. That means we set back the free pointer. And then we have to check again whether the capacity of this memory block is sufficient for this allocation. This hopefully is the case and usually will be the case, but in general this might not be the case. Then we have to check again whether a memory block is available in this linked list of released memory blocks, and then we take off the next memory block from there. So that means this first memory block is now wasted. We do not use its memory for allocation. But this is a price for efficiency, because by that we will make sure that all these memory blocks always will be linked as before. And then releasing memory becomes simpler and more efficient. So hopefully now this next memory block that we took off from this linked list of released memory blocks is sufficiently large for the allocation. But in general, this might again not be the case. And then we have the worst case scenario. We completely wasted this memory blocks that were previously released and have to allocate another memory block, which then is guaranteed to be sufficiently uh, large. And from that, then we allocate the memory. Now, before we implement this, let me also show you another uh, run for this um, scenario where we allocate memory, release memory, and allocate memory again. In this next run, I want to give a more exciting example how prepending a linked list of used memory blocks to this linked list of released memory blocks actually happens in general when the linked list of released node is not empty. First, let's assume that we already allocated a few memory blocks and then we release these memory blocks. So that means now this linked list of released memory blocks is not empty. It contains all these previously used uh, memory blocks. Then we allocate another time memory and let's assume that we need two memory blocks from this linked list of released memory blocks. So we take them and detach them from there. Then we release memory again, and now this linked list of released memory blocks is not empty. So here, prepending this linked list um, to this list of released memory blocks is more exciting. First, we will make sure that the next pointer of the current tail uh, node is pointing to the first memory block in this linked list of released memory blocks, like that. Then we let the released pointer point to the first memory block after the head node, like that. And then we detach this memory block from the head node, again, like that. And then we set back the tail pointer, like that. And now I think we can implement these two functions for allocating and releasing memory.
Okay, so first of all, we need another list for this released memory blocks. So we simply can do this in one line. And then we can implement the release function. So first, the next pointer in the tail node will point to the first memory block in the released list. And then the released pointer will point to the first memory block after the head node. Then we detach the head from the memory block. And then we set back the tail pointer to the head node. And that's it. And then this function for allocating memory uh, needs to be changed. This becomes a while loop now. And here I also want to print some message that we uh, will allocate a certain number of bytes. This also makes it easier to read this memory reports. And then we will first check whether we can reuse a memory block from this list of released um, memory blocks. So we will take off the first memory block from this list if this is uh, if such a memory block is available. And here we also print a message that we will reuse a memory block. And then we have to remove this memory block from the list of released memory blocks. So released now points to the next memory block in this list. And here I can simply copy this here. Uh, if we cannot reuse a memory block, then we allocate a new memory block. And I also want to print a message for that. And now after we got a memory block, we have to make sure that the next point is actually the null pointer. Well, that actually means um, we had a bug before, because before the next point of the tail node was not uh, set to the null pointer. So shame on me. So that means we had an undefined behavior. Probably things went well because malloc returned a zero initialized memory block by coincidence but in general uh, we had an undefined behavior so maybe we have to review the memory reports from before i just was looking at the first memory report okay but anyway now uh, this problem should be fixed and then here i want to print a message um, that we now have allocated memory So here I have to compute the original value of the free pointer and I'm going to print this address where memory was allocated. Okay, now let's compile this. Okay, uh, printf actually wants to have here a void pointer for this placeholder percent p. Okay, we can do that. Now the important thing is that we don't want to have more than 80 characters in one line. So let's make it nice. And now this should compile without warnings. Now let's see what the memory report tells us now. Okay, maybe like that. Then you also see the test program or the relevant part of it and also the printout of the memory region. Now actually it would be nice to see in the memory report also some uh, information about the list of released nodes. So let's simply add here another loop and 
uh, also let's improve here the message this is the information about the use blocks and after that i want to have the information about the released blocks so that means here i iterate over the list of the released memory blocks using the same pattern as before and now this memory report will be a bit more meaningful okay now let's look at this memory report a bit more careful compared to before so you see after this first block of allocations we have as before two memory blocks in use and no released memory blocks and then we have released all the memory blocks you also see that in this released memory blocks the number of available bytes is as before this wasn't changed then we have another allocation and after that just one memory block is in use uh, still 64 bytes uh, are available in this memory block and one block is in the list of released memory blocks and then we release again memory and in the end you see that all two memory blocks are now on the list again on the released memory blocks and now of course it would be nice uh, to actually also generate some LaTeX uh, file that uh, visualizes this um, list uh, as you saw it before on the slides and actually it wouldn't be too hard but I think for an exercise it would be a bit um, over the top but maybe I will provide some examples on the website for uh, printing such visualized informations when you allocate memory then you usually want to have aligned memory at least aligned for all the built-in types so that you actually can store data in this memory blocks now this alignment requirement for all this built-in types of course is platform dependent when you want to have a platform independent uh, way to access this information about this alignment requirements you can use this type max align t declared in the standard library at least since c11 when you use malloc you can be sure that this memory block that gets allocated by malloc is properly aligned so for our allocate function we first of all have to make sure that this first available byte in the memory block is at a proper address an address that has this alignment requirement and this now depends on the size of this block header eventually we have to increase this size so that we have some bytes for padding after this block header before we actually have this block of memory that can be used for allocating memory to do that to increase the size of the block header eventually if it's needed we simply declare a new type a union type which is a union of the struct block and this max align type so this guarantees that this size of this union um, block header is a multiple of this alignment requirement then we also have to make sure that after allocating memory from our mem memory block this free pointer again points to an address which is a multiple of this alignment requirement and we simply solve that by eventually rounding up this number of bytes that should be allocated to the next multiple of the alignment requirement and with that we basically solve the problem of providing aligned memory okay so first of all we need this union block header and for that we can simply wrap this struct block in a union and of course um, this struct block has to become a member of this union and another member is of type max align t and then we have to change the computations uh, for the memory block size 
that this also becomes block header. Then also in alloc from mem region, we also have a, a struct block in this computation for the first byte in this memory block after the block header. So this also needs to be changed. And then we have to make sure that after allocating memory from our memory block, um, the free point is still aligned. So we eventually a, um, allocate a bit more than is actually required. We round up this to the next multiple of this alignment requirement. And for that, I want to have a, a simple function for rounding up. But let me first include this header for a line off. Okay, so this roundup function is of course a static function. It's just used internally and we will implement it very simple. We first add b minus 1 to a, then we divide it by b and then we multiply it by b. And just in case some smart ass is telling us that this could be done more efficiently by using bitwise operations, let's leave a comment here that the compiler certainly can inline this function and we'll see that b is always a power of 2 and therefore can optimize it to this um, expression here. Oops. So let's see whether we also have other struct blocks. So here, this actually should be a const pointer. We just want to read out information of this memory blocks. So just a design issue, but here we also need union block header for computing the capacity. And also here, of course. Now we can compile the test program again. Okay, actually some warnings. Uh, of course, we also have to use const pointers in this uh, typecasts here in the print info function. So this should be a const char pointer also here. And then we also have to change this void pointers into const void pointers. So that means here we certainly need a line break. And the same here, of course. Okay, now let's see. No more warnings. And now let's have a look at the memory report here. When we allocate this 42 bytes three times, the first time we create a new memory block and for the second allocation this memory block gets used again and for the third allocation we have to create a new memory block. So that means after this block of allocations we have two memory blocks in use. And in this report, we see after releasing memory, uh, this is, comes from this print info, this report, after releasing memory, we have two memory blocks in the list of released memory blocks. Then we allocate again 42 bytes. And here we reuse a memory block from the list of released memory blocks. And after that, one memory block is in use and one is on the list of released memory blocks. So this comes from this print info call. And then we release again memory and in this last report, um, we therefore see that um, both memory blocks are now um, on the list of released memory blocks. And now of course we, in the end, before we terminate, uh, have to call finalize. And then all these memory blocks uh, actually should be released by calling free. 
So let's at least start with uh, that. Um, actually, cleaning up will be uh, your exercise or part of your exercise. But I want to give you a head start. So instead of printing this uh, to do message, uh, you of course should uh, free all the memory blocks. And then we also have to register this cleanup function. This will happen when alloc block gets called the first time using the usual pattern for making sure that this is only done once and only the first time. So after setting first to false, we call finalize register with cleanup as parameter. So you also have to include the header file for pool. And if we now run the program, we should see in the end this to do message. Okay, now let's see. Okay, here we go. And this is the message for you. On the website, I will provide you more information about how to generalize this implementation. But of course, there also will be an exercise. First of all, when final layers get scored, we also should release actually all the memory blocks by calling free for all these memory blocks so that we do not have a memory leak. And then, of course, we also should integrate this memory management into our calculator so that we also get rid of all the memory leaks there. And then, of course, we should simply use Valgrind to validate that everything worked out. I think this will be not a big problem, so have fun.